There are many ways to earn some cash while being a student. You can work in Tesco as a cashier, or you can drive an Uber if you have a car, or you can participate in surveys and hope you're the lucky few to win that $50 Amazon voucher. But in this video, I want to share with you guys how I started making a decent amount of money while studying in uni. The beauty is, this method also helped me in preparing for my exams and improve my understanding in certain topics. So what are we waiting for? Hit the like and subscribe button down below and let's get started. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Shreyas Vinak and I'm a junior doctor currently working in NHS England. Now before we move on, I want to make it clear that I'm not talking about making 3 to 5 thousand pounds a month. I'm talking between the range of 3 to 500. I don't want anyone thinking that this video is going to make them a millionaire in medical school. The added amount of cash did help me out with my expenses and make it a lot easier to order takeout and buy cool tech stuff without feeling too bad about it. Now with that aside, I'm going to split this video into two sections. Part A will be about the Cornell note taking method and part B will be about how I made money out of it. The Cornell note taking system was introduced back in the 1940s. It is not only more efficient, but also makes it a lot easier to review your notes closer to your exams. There are numerous resources on YouTube and websites which go in depth as to who, when and how this method is beneficial. I'll just give you all a quick breakdown of how I started using this method during my medical school. I only adopted this method of studying during my third year. I realized as opposed to just passively reading content over and over, I wanted to test myself on topics that I have already covered. Of course you have question banks that are readily available and are quite good, but I wanted to cover topics that I have recently studied more specifically and that's when I came across this method of note taking. It is fairly straightforward. Try to divide your page into two sections. The section on the right, just jot down any information you gather from your lectures or anything you read that is fairly important. And the section on the left, just formulate a question based on your new information. For example, on the right if you jot down CT head is the first line investigation for a suspected stroke. On the left hand side, just write down what is the first line investigation for a stroke. Try to slowly formulate your questions similar to the ones you come across in an exam and eventually you realize you start to pick out key points that are high yield for your exam purposes while studying. Over time, you start to formulate more complex questions and realize this method of learning is far more effective. If you are used to typing your notes out, you can use apps like Notion or Evernote to jot down points that are high yield and just add a question above it with a toggle list. You can come back to it at a later point and test yourself even while you're using your phone. After a while, I felt I was able to formulate more complex questions and this is when I thought why not apply to be an author for a question bank. The first step was easy. I just emailed the customer support of the commonly used question banks in the UK and was offered to be an author for two of them. The question bank I preferred to write for was Pass Medicine as the interface was straightforward and this was the question bank I used quite often as a medical student. So there are several sections for authors to contribute within Pass Medicine. You can either write questions or you can do your own research on a certain topic that is offered and improve their clinical knowledge bank. Pass Medicine also notifies you the availability of each type of question. For instance, currently there's a high demand for questions, so you select question writing and choose what exam will your questions be suitable for. Next, you must select the concept your questions will focus on and highlight. Once you select 10 questions, you can start formulating your questions around that particular concept. When selecting topics, what I commonly do is I select 5 topics that I'm quite strong in and five, and the remaining 5 which I'm quite weak on. This way I have an added drive to thoroughly understand the topic before I start formulating those questions. The website also provides question writing guidelines and step by step guide on how to start which is very helpful. But this is where it gets slightly tricky. Each question is reviewed and tested on the site. Only once it is approved and receives a certain rating will you be paid for your hard work. It took me a couple of attempts to truly get a hang of it and understand what is expected by the question bank authors. But similar to riding a bike, once you know how, it just comes naturally. 
Now the section on clinical knowledge base is what excites me the most. For this, you essentially choose a topic that is offered by the site and you do your homework on this particular topic extensively and you just summarize it. This can be something like lumbar disc herniation or the compartment syndrome diagnosis and management. The target audience for this section is non-specialist doctors, not medical students, but that doesn't mean you can't contribute. You just have to do a bit more reading than usual. The plus side is this section offers a bit more money than writing questions and the fact that you need to understand something before summarizing it helps you retain that particular topic a lot longer. Bottom line, I felt becoming a question bank author not only helped me improve my knowledge but also made my bank statement look slightly less depressing. You don't have to be in 4th or 5th year to start, you can start as early as 1st year as long as you're willing to put that extra effort in. In the end, added information right at the beginning will only help you during your clinical years and it's not time wasted. If you guys are keen, let me know in the comments down below and I'll create an in-depth video on how I get this done. I'll try to post it out as soon as possible. That's about it for this week guys. I hope you guys learned something from it and are keen to put it to the test. Drop any questions in the comment down below or you can DM me on Twitter or Instagram and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, hit the like and subscribe button down below. I hope you guys are wearing your mask and staying safe out there and I'll catch y'all in my next video.